Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to the bright side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on the Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, Miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are your go-to source for all things health and nutrition, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Got lines open for you now, calls are starting to come in actually. Um, but we do have lines open, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or call 866-735-2470 for more information. And please think about joining the Brightside Ben team. I'd love to have you on the team. We can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program together. You can make a little bit of money. You can get your products at the wholesale price, if you like, for a one-time $30 fee. It used to be $20. It just went up by $5. Uh, it's well worth it for a one-time $30 fee. You can get your products at the wholesale price or start yourself a business if you are so inclined. Call 866-735-2470 or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side. I did a radio interview this morning on KSCO in Santa Cruz, my home away from home, Santa Cruz is. Uh, something special about Santa Cruz. Just super smart people. Just a really, really cool place to hang out. Anyway, did a radio interview on KSCO and we talked about nails and I got to thinking, and I actually, uh, I've been thinking about this, the idea that we can target specific parts of the body without targeting the entire body or without, without focusing on the entire body. Health is about the entire body. I got a call just before I went on the air from a gal. She wanted to buy testosterone. Her testosterone is low. What can she do for her testosterone? She's not building muscle. I said, you know, and I, I know when I said it, it came out harsh, but I said, it's, it's not, you don't want to, your testosterone's low because you're not healthy. I know that came out harsh and I didn't mean it that way, but that's how we want to look at these things. Not that when we, when we have a health problem, when we have a, a, a nail problem or a skin problem or, or, or a blood pressure problem or testosterone is not high, it, it is not high enough. It's about the body. It's about the body as a whole. It's about the health. And while it may sound harsh to say your testosterone is low because you're not healthy, that's really what it's about. And it's not that I was being mean or I know it came out mean, but I didn't, I didn't mean it to be mean. I just wanted her to know that you have to focus on the health of the body, the whole system. This is why nutrition is so important, people. It's not because you get nutrients for a specific illness. You get nutrients to make the body healthy. It's not about, I have this problem, what supplement do I take? I call that, I call that this for that. I have this, what do I take? I have this, you take that. It's about making the body healthy, the entire body body. We want to focus on the body as a whole. That's why the digestive system is so important. And that's why we've been talking about the digestive system. We talk about it every day. We've been talking about the minerals and there's a, there's a very important relationship between mineral health and the digestive system. Very important. And minerals themselves are so fundamental to how the body works. They're fundamental to everything. Minerals are fundamental to everything the way the earth is fundamental to all life. Think about it that way. Okay. The earth is a mineral basically. The earth 
fundamental to everything that grows on it, quite obviously. And minerals are fundamental to everything that lives. Minerals are electrically active, and that makes them, unfortunately, very confusing. They're the most confusing of all the nutrients because they're electrically active. They come in different forms. They, they, they shape shift because they have these different forms. They don't just shape shift. They also combine with other things. Nonetheless, everything arises from the minerals the way all life arises from the earth. The minerals are primary. All the other nutrients are secondary. The minerals are primary. All the other nutrients, the aminos, the fatty acids, the sugars, the vitamins, the rest of the, the, the Mighty 90 is made up of minerals, amino acids, fatty acids, uh, and that's basically it. You, you could throw some sugars in there. They're not part of the Mighty 90, but they're still important. Peptides are important. These are all things that get absorbed into the body. They're secondary. The minerals are primary. Geology is before biology. The minerals are geological. Everything else is biological. When we talk about the minerals, it's kind of, it's sort of misleading when we talk about the minerals because the minerals aren't the minerals. The minerals are the elements. Minerals are already complex. They're already things. The, well, the body doesn't need minerals. It needs elements. The elements are carried on the minerals. The elements are all the things that are on the periodic table. And without having, getting overwhelmed by that thing, it's really quite amazing, quite miraculous how they, how they figured out. You know, they got the boxes before they found the, the elements. They knew that there would be boxes for things, and then they found the elements after they filled the boxes in the periodic table. Anyway, everything on that periodic table, or most things on that periodic table, is what the body needs. Those are the elements. Some of, it, some of these things it needs in the most infinitesimal amounts. Why? Why does it need... These things, in they call them ultra-trace minerals, hafnium, ytribium, erbium. I mean, th things you never heard of. Why is it that neodymium, I love that one, why is it that they have a biological effect on, uh, on plants and on, on humans when, when they're used by the body, and humans anyway, it's very, very ridiculously infinitesimal amounts. It's because they're electrical. Minerals are already chemicals. A mineral is a chemical. A mineral is made up of molecules, which are made up of elements. When we talk about nutritional, nutritional minerals, we're talking about the elements that are contained in the minerals. The elements are the nutrients, not the minerals. We shouldn't call them minerals. It's a misnomer, and it leads to a lot of confusion. We need the elements, not the minerals, the elements are the nutrients, not the minerals. And this is really important. This is not just semantic, because if we understand that, then we can start to tease apart all the various ways these elements come, all the various, uh, uh, all the various minerals, types of minerals. There's all these different types of minerals that carry the elements. You have, for example, one type of mineral called a salt. A salt is a mineral. Table salt, the stuff you sprinkle on your french fries, is a mineral. It's made up of two elements, sodium and chloride. Body doesn't need salt. It doesn't need table salt. It needs sodium and it needs chloride. It needs the minerals. Technically, these are, are very special kinds of minerals. They're called electrolytes, and I'll talk about that here uh, in a little bit. You've got magnesium chloride. You go to the health food store, and you want to buy some magnesium, you'll see magnesium chloride, or you might see magnesium oxide. These are salts. It's a certain type of mineral, but it's not the mineral that the body wants. It's the element. And the reason this is important is because different salts are handled by the body differently. For example, magnesium oxide is not handled by the body very well. And when I say handled, I mean it doesn't get the benefit of the magnesium. See, the body doesn't need the oxide, it needs the magnesium. Calcium carbonate. It doesn't need, the, the body doesn't need the carbonate, it needs the calcium, and calcium carbonate is different from calcium citrate. Those are two different salts, and you, if you don't understand the distinction, you'll think they're both the same thing, because they're both calcium, but they're not. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this.
Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You can also go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com to purchase Longevity products or to sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30, to $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself. Call 866-735-2470 if you want to speak to a person, or you can click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. So we're talking about the minerals. If you don't understand the difference between the minerals and the elements, it makes it much harder to understand the different forms of minerals. And this is why mineral, one reason anyway, why minerals are so confusing. They come in all these different varieties and forms. What form do you take? Doc's been talking about plant-derived minerals. We'll talk about those here momentarily. They're by far and away the way human beings are supposed to. They're the best way to get your minerals. By far and away, the best way to get your minerals is plant-derived, eating veggies or in terms of supplements, the derivatives of veggies, which is what plant-derived colloidal minerals are. The, the salts are the most common kind of minerals that you find in the health food store or in, in the world of nutrition. Magnesium chloride, magnesium oxide, zinc sulfate, zinc carbonate, calcium carbonate. Uh, iron has different forms, ferrous sulfate, ferrous gluconate. Which, what do you take? What forms? What is the difference? It's all so confusing. Well. The second word after that mineral is called the salt, the salt of that mineral. So carbonate is the salt of calcium in calcium carbonate. Sulfate is the salt of zinc in, the, uh, in, in zinc sulfate. So you say the salt form of a mineral, that's how you, you refer to it, is what is the salt form of zinc in this particular element? You'll say, oh, it's zinc sulfate. What is the salt form of calcium? Oh, it's calcium carbonate. What salt form of all these minerals is best absorbed. It's significant. Calcium carbonate is the one everybody's taking, or most people, OSCAL. That's the classic form of calcium, and it's only maybe 20% absorbed. The calcium is. You don't need the carbonate. You're looking for the calcium. Body can make carbonate. doesn't need carbonate. It needs calcium. Can't make calcium. Calcium uh, aspartate. That's another interesting one. There's That's a special kind of salt. I'm going to talk about that here in a second. There's special kinds of salts called chelates. That's another kind of salt. But the, the kind of salts that most of us see in nutritional supplements are cheap. They're easy to manufacture. They take advantage of the fact that calcium wants to be with carbonate. They're very easy. They're found in nature. They're very easy to mix together. And that second word is a very, uh, second form, the salt form, second word, is very important to uh, understand when it comes to understanding how powerful, or not just how powerful, uh, but how, uh, uh, how benign or how gentle, I should say, a, uh, a, a supplement will be. For example, zinc chloride is going to upset your stomach. Zinc sulfate will upset your stomach. That's the kind, those are the cheap kinds of forms. If you're ever taking zinc, you heard me talk about zinc and and you said, oh, I'm going to start taking zinc. It's so important. And you go to the Walgreens and you get your zinc sulfate and you take it on an empty stomach. You're not going to feel so good because zinc sulfate and zinc uh, uh, chloride, for example, uh, uh, and a, a lot of the forms of zinc are very hard on the stomach. But there's another form of zinc that I always talk about called zinc picolinate. That picolinate is a rock star, literally. It takes the rock of zinc and makes it available and makes it easy for the body to handle. Zinc picolinate is way easier for the body to handle than zinc sulfate. The picolinate is a, a chelate. It's a special kind of salt. So salt forms of the salt form of calcium and calcium carbonate is carbonate. The salt form of uh, magnesium, magnesium oxide is oxide. The salt form of zinc that is the gentlest is the chelated salt form called picolinate. Picolinate is amazing, amazing stuff. By the way, chelate means to claw. And a, the difference between a chelate and a salt is a chelate surrounds the zinc. A uh, salt just sticks to the zinc. The fact that the chelate, the chelate means claw, it kind of claws, picture an animal's claw clawing the, uh, the zinc, in the case of zinc picolinate, uh, that gives it a, a little element of protection and also helps the body handle it much better. Zinc picolinate is handled way by, better by the body. The zinc is way more available to the body in zinc picolinate form, uh, the zinc picolinate salt form, chelate form, than uh, zinc sulfate. I, 
No, I don't think sulfate is awful stuff. I mean, I've taken it. It is awful stuff. Picolinate is super, super, super gentle, and it's much easier for the body to handle. Picolinate is very, very underappreciated. You've heard of it because you've heard of chromium picolinate. That's another mineral. The reason it's, it's so functional and so gentle is because the body makes picolinate. Picolinate is how the body takes minerals out of food. Picolinate is a magnet. It's a, it's, it's a chelating substance. It's a clawing substance, but you can think of it like a magnet. It pulls minerals to it and surrounds them and makes it easy for the body to handle, whether, you're, whether it does it in the form of a supplement or whether it does it in your pancreas. Picolinate is made from tryptophan. It's a, type of, it's a derivative of, of the amino acid tryptophan, and it is found in digestive juices. It's made in the liver. It's made in the kidneys, and they secrete it in the pancreas. And it plays a major, major role in helping the body extract minerals from foods. When you eat a food, when you, uh, it goes, you chew your food, it goes down your esophagus and goes into your stomach. It goes, gets all enzyme, enzymatically treated and, and, and soaked in acid. It drops into the, sto- uh, into the intestine from the stomach. It gets hit with the juices from the pancreas. And those juices from the pancreas liberate things free things up. Actually, it gets hit with a, with a big jolt of pancreatic juice, and at the same time, a big squirt of bile. And between the bile and the pancreatic juice, this is amazing stuff. It's like, it reminds me of a car that goes through those car washes where the brushes come down and then fluids, waxes and fluids and soap and water and all the things that, that are in the car wash to clean the car get squirted at, at the car as the car goes down the goes down the, uh, the line there, and that's kind of what happens with food. It gets squirted and brushed and crushed and all these different processes occur to it. Well, the most important process, the most important nutrient liberating process, they're all important, of course, but the most important is this big blast of bile and pancreatic juices that hits the food as it drops out of the stomach. And in, that, uh, in the pancreatic juices there, you've got picolinate. And the picolinate is pulling out the minerals. Now, you also got, of course, bile that's in lecithin that's pulling out the vitamin E and the essential fatty acids. You've got enzymes in the pancreas that are pulling out the fats and breaking up the uh, carbohydrates and breaking up the proteins. And there's all kinds of action that's happening in there, right at that juncture where the food leaves your stomach and enters into the intestine. Right at that juncture is the, that's the, that's the heart of the uh, chemical processing of the food that we call digestion, right there at that level. And that's why you need your gallbladder, that's why pancreatic cancer is so significant and so serious, and that's also why intestinal health is so important, because after all of that happens, it's in the intestine where all that di- where, where the, the nutrients that have been liberated are now gonna enter in, into the bloodstream. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. Got lines open. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a commercial break and come back with more good health information. Don't go away. Right side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. So hang tight. From Stony Brook University School of Medicine. Sleeping in the lateral or side position as compared to sleeping on one's back or stomach may more effectively remove brain waste. Uh, brain waste. And prove to be an important practice to help reduce the chances of developing Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other neurological diseases, according to researchers at Stony Brook University. Turns out, this is published in the Journal of Neuroscience, that by sleeping on the side, you drain out your toxins out of your brain. This is kind of interesting about the brain. The brain has a, has a, uh, has a lymphatic system. This is kind of new. People didn't really realize this uh, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Actually, it, it wasn't big news, probably anatomists had seen it, but it wasn't really big news that the brain drains waste. And it turns out that dementia and Parkinson's disease are at least partially uh, caused by, or at least involve, some level of brain waste accumulation of toxicity in the brain. That's why moving your body is so important 
hanging upside down, and as it turns out, body posture may play a role in how toxins are drained out of the brain. Most people sleep in uh, fetal position. Fetal position, I think, is the number one way that people sleep. There's different, they actually have associated different, uh, different uh, body positions with different personality characteristics, as it turns out. Women are more likely to sleep in the fetal position than men. People who are educated, this is kind of interesting, you know, people who, uh, in, at least according to this survey, people who claim that they, who uh, stated that they were, uh, had higher levels of education, graduate school or more, were less likely to sleep in the fetal position. Fetal, 47% of Americans, half, nearly half of Americans report that they sleep in the fetal position. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open. Let's do one more here, and then we'll get your phone call. Speaking of brain health, researchers claim modern living may contribute to dementia. Well, no kidding. If you understand the, the level of the relationship between toxicity and dementia, you will understand the relationship between blood sugar and dementia. Alzheimer's disease is now called type, two, uh, type 3 diabetes. If you understand the relationship between digestive health issues and dysbiosis and dementia, as well as Parkinson's disease, which is related to dementia. It makes perfect sense, according to this article. Uh, neuro, uh, more people are dying with neurological conditions now than 20 years ago. That means 19, this is, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Particularly among, uh, particularly among the over 75s, rates in the U.S. appear to be growing faster than other U.S. countries, in contrast, Deaths from cancer and heart disease have dropped. This is a published in the, surgical, the journal Surgical Neurolog Neurology International. Related study shows dementia patients benefit from holistic exercise program. I've been saying this forever. People in nursing homes, and I'm not talking about the kind of exercise that they give you. I'm talking about putting some, you know, people in nursing homes, they'll put them in the, on the little exercise bike kind of thing, or, you know, they'll do some things, but I'm talking about really resistance training or, or working up a little bit of a sweat, putting up some stress in the system. You can do some amazing things, not just for dementia patients, but also for depressed patients. Just for every single marker of health, putting some resistance on the, in the body, making the body work. Body wants to work. It likes to work. It doesn't like to work a lot. <laughs> That's for sure. It doesn't like to work 40 hours a week. It doesn't like to work. It doesn't like to work intensely more than a few minutes. But it does like to work just for very short periods of time, followed by long, luscious relaxation and rest. That's how the body loves it. Intense bursts of stress followed by long, luscious rest. That's how you want to take care of your body. That's how you want to take care of your mind. That's how you want to take care of everything that's alive. Intense stress, quick bursts, followed by long, luscious rest. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to the phones and welcome Mary to the bright side. You must have something you want to tell me, Mary, because you've been holding on forever. What's going on? Mary. Um, well, I couldn't understand your guest. What did he say that that um, to make us great? Let's see, make us great one like. To make you know us that, great one like. Yeah, that's what he called it, the great one, and and we become. You're talking about the my, my Sri Vishnu. Mur yes. Yeah, he was hard to understand. That's too bad because he has a lot of good things to say. But I, I know what you're saying. But I don't remember what he's. I don't know what you're specifically pointing out to, though. That's too oh, bad. Darn. But you know what? Yeah. I'll get you. Hit. Why don't you send me an email, Mary, and I'll get you a way to get in contact with him. Okay, because I don't know offhand. I would tell you. Yeah. But if, no, I, I don't remember even. His, what's I don't that? have time for that. But I thought okay. his advice was great. I just wish I could have understood him. Yes, I know. I know exactly what you're saying. It was hard to understand. But he does. He has some great stuff, and he has some really good stuff online. Uh, if you just Google him or Facebook him, um, he's, he was, he, I was impressed with a lot of the stuff he said. You know, he was just taking stuff that we talk about, like power ideas and, and self-help and uh, kind of the, the, a lot of the mental and emotional strategies we talk about in this program. And he was just putting it in a Hindu metaphor. And, and I thought that was really cool. 
because you know Hinduism can be a little corny, I think. But if you just use the metaphors of personal development that we all know and and treasure, that everybody, that a lot of people know and treasure, I should say, uh, and just put put a Hindu dressing on them, it's basically the same ideas: tapping into divine intelligence, respecting divine intelligence, honoring divine. And I call it divine intelligence because it's just neutral that way. But you could you could say God or Brahma or you know whatever metaphor you want to use. Uh, but it's, there's this there's this thing we can all tap into. And that, that's the simplest way of putting it without dressing it up in some kind of uh, uh, religious metaphor that people can object to. There's this thing we can all tap into. There's this thing that runs our heart and our bodies. There's this thing that wakes us up in the morning. And I'm just saying this thing, it's electromagnetics, it's consciousness, it's intelligence, whatever. This thing you can tap into and it can get you through anything, through the valley of death. As it says in the Bible, it gets you through anything, and we all have access to it. And that, that to me, that is the, that's the ultimate message of all spirituality and all religions. And I, I just loved his eye. You know, I loved the way he presented it in, in, with his Hindu metaphor, but it's really basically the same idea as we talk about here. SMEP, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. It's the spiritual, mental, and emotional upper, uh, dimensions of good health. I hope that helps. Uh, does that what you want to ask, Mary, or anything else you want to talk about? Well, I, I did want to know the trick that he said, because I, I played it over and over, and I couldn't understand him. But anyway, I have, since you are my um, health care practitioner, it's only fair. Oh, no, fair I don't to, know if I can do that. It's only fair to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you recognize those terms? Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to thank you for the liquid diet phase. You know, it was so successful. You suggested liquid diet for people. I It took me a while to achieve it, but I achieved it. I did it for a long time. But I want you to know that I have now gone carnivore. Okay, that's good. Liquid thing about you can you know, you can do a snake smooth a steak smoothie if you want. You know, I saw somebody do that one time. It looked kind of disgusting. I'm just kidding. Here's the thing about liquid diet. It's awesome, but you gotta make sure you're getting your fiber. So when I say liquid diet, I'm you gotta include veggie juices with the fiber. Uh, liquids are definitely the way to go, though, especially if you have any digestive health issues. Liquids are just an awesome delivery system for nutrition. They're pre-digested, pre-digested food, basically. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back on the Bright Side right after this. Okay, we are back. Right side, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Barry in NOLA, New Orleans, Louisiana. What's going on, Barry? Yes, uh, good morning. Yes, um, I, I just have almost a million questions sometimes. Uh, um, first question I want to ask you is, um, you mentioned the fourfold, uh, that fourfold, um, you know, like moving the body, you know, oxygen. Can you uh, uh, repeat why that is? I'm sorry. I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Moving the body and oxygen, did you say? Yes, yeah, the fourfold approach. That sounds like to me the, the key to one of the uh, things that uh, you say. So I yes, like it's to... the fourfold square of health. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest, NRMR. So nutriate, that's what we talk about here all the time, basically. A respirate is incredibly important, incredibly. You know, when you, when you I was watching this thing yesterday on uh, metallurgy, and uh, they were talking about how you got to, if you're going to turn iron into, uh, into steel, you got to get incredibly high heat. And one of the ways they generate incredibly high heat is with, uh, with a bellows. They have these bellows that they pump into the um, that pumps oxygen into uh, the, these furnaces, these ovens, and they turn the they get the temperature up really, really high that way. It's the same thing in the body. The body uses oxygen to burn things. The body uses oxygen to release nutrient to uh, oxidize nutrients to release nutrients. It's called oxidation, but it's kind of burning. So respiration is incredibly important, especially when you eat, especially while you're eating, oxygenating. When, the, when, you, when you're digesting, oxygenation is a link to digestion. You know, that's a very important point. So anyway, respiration is incredibly important. And I say respiration and not just oxygen because it's both phases of respiration. Respiration is an inhale and an exhale. They're both important. In fact, 
carbon dioxide, blowing off carbon dioxide is maybe more important than breathing in oxygen in the sense that, number one, you're getting rid of toxicity when you blow out and, and acid. And number two, carbon dioxide is a magnet or, uh, for, uh, for oxygen. So when you, when you uh, increase your carbon dioxide, as your carbon dioxide goes up, your um, your oxygen le your body becomes more receptive to oxygen. You follow me? So yeah. oxygen and carbon dioxide. Are, the bottom line here is they're both important. Carbon dioxide is an oxygen magnet, and blowing off carbon dioxide is a, a way of detoxifying. So anyway, so both phases of, of respiration are important. Inhale, inhaling and exhaling. Nutrient delivery, detoxification, um, uh, energy. There's all kinds of mechanisms that, are, that kick in, health mechanisms that kick in when you respirate correctly. Then there's the movement. The movement does so many things. The movement, number one, improves the blood flow, and everything's about the blood. When we talk about the body being sick or inside the body, or we talk about all diseases, cell disease, it starts off with the blood. When we talk about the importance of the digestive system, it's because the food gets turned into the blood, literally. The food we eat that we... Uh, don't uh, that we don't excrete, that we don't dump out of our bodies, that we don't eliminate, is turned into our body in the blood. The blood is the f is basically how the food, how the body turns, uh, becomes the f how the body becomes the food. Body becomes the food at the level of the blood, and moving the blood is incredibly important, even if it means just breathing, because slow deep breathing will help you move your blood. Anyway. Uh, as you, your blood circulates, you generate something called a zeta potential, which is electrical energy. Um, so that's important for just for the generation of electrical charges. There's so many reasons why it's important to move the body. And then, of course, as I was saying before we went to our break, the body loves long, luscious rest. It loves rest. And so uh, that's when you recover. That's when you grow. Understanding how to leverage the rest period is a critical part of uh, taking advantage of the movement period, the stimula stimulating period, uh, in, in any kind of exercise program or skin program or, or internal health program. It's a combination of movement and rest. Nutriate, respirate, move, and rest. Is that helpful? Uh, yes. And uh, I want to ask you, uh, I, I've been having eye floaters for quite a, quite a while. And, You're seeing uh, your eye deteriorating. That's what you're seeing. The floaters are tissue, little pieces of eye, microscopic, that, as they may be. It's damaged eye tissue, and you're seeing it. You follow me? I mean, think about it. You have, it's like basically a dirty wind. It's a crack in your windshield or a crack in your window. Your lens covers your eye. When the eye starts to de deteriorate, whether it's the lens or inside the eye, it, you start to see floaters. It's just a general sign of de a deterioration. How old are you, Barry? Oh, I'm in my 60s. Okay, well, that's just par for the course, you know. Um, are you? Do you have any? Are you on any medicine? No. Are you uh, any issues with your blood sugar? I mean, it would be a miracle if there weren't. But any issues no. you know of with no. your blood sugar? Okay, no. well, that's what I'd be focusing on: is blood sugar, and then probably also digestion. That's always a good thing to focus on. First thing, though, is uh, I don't want to say first, but one of the most important things is blood sugar. And it turns out the nutrients that are important for blood sugar are also important for the eye especially zinc, vitamin E, the entire B complex. And I, again, I don't like picking specific nutrients for specific parts of the body, but because blood sugar is so fundamental, anything you do for, for the, uh, the nutrients that are important for the eye are also important for blood sugar, and that will cover you for a lot of things. So uh, uh, zinc, vitamin E, the B complex, selenium, sulfur, vitamin C, lots of vitamin C, uh, the amino acid taurine, Lots of things you could do, and again, if you're not, if you got a problem with the digest, with your digestion, then guess what? You're going to also have a problem with nutrients, even if you take nutritional supplements. So work on the digestive system as well. All right. All right. Uh, and um, uh, wow. Uh, one, one quick question. Uh, um, selenium. I'm, uh, if I eat uh, two Brazil nuts a day, is that enough selenium? You know, I hear that periodically. Vegetarians tell me or people don't want to supplement will tell me they use Brazil nuts for selenium. Here's the problem with using Brazil nuts for selenium. 
and here's the problem with using any food for, for minerals. See, they'll tell you how, many, how, much, how much selenium is in Brazil nuts. If you look on the art, you know, these lists of how many, how, what kind of nutrients are in what kind of foods, you'll see 100 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 200 milligrams. They'll tell you, uh, foodies will tell you that, oh, Brazil nuts are a great source of selenium. You don't know that. You have no idea how much selenium is in your Brazil nuts because you don't know where that Brazil nut was grown. You don't know what the soil was like where that Brazil nut was grown. In fact, that's true about all veggies and all produce, unfortunately. So when you read about uh, uh, chili peppers being having 400 milligrams of vitamin C in them or, or cantaloupe having 150 milligrams of vitamin C per whatever, or, you know, an orange having 30 milligrams of vitamin C, whatever, you know, you read these numbers of nutri uh, milligrams of nutrients per food, that's baloney. You don't know where that soil was, where that plant was grown, where that lettuce was grown, where that apple was grown. You have no idea what was in the soil. That's why supplementation is so important. So in my opinion, selenium is so critical as an essential nutrient, especially in detoxification, especially for the eyes, for you, uh, in particular, Barry, I wouldn't be messing around with Brazil nuts. You may be getting zero for all you know, right? Five milligrams, one, two, two milligrams. You may not be getting anywhere near the, I'm sorry, micrograms of selenium that you need. Micro, uh, selenium is present in very, very tiny amounts, micrograms, and it's incredibly important. Selenium, Doc's been talking about selenium for decades. It is unbelievably important, way too important to, uh, to get trust your Brazil nuts as a source. All right, Barry, that's it. We're out of time, I think. Oh, no, we're not out of time. I, I thought I heard the music. I'm going to get one more call in, okay? I want to talk to my friend Dorian. Thanks so much, Barry. I appreciate your call. Dorian, you get the last word once again. What's up, bro? I'm just calling because my dad wanted to know the best strategy for detoxing. Fasting is the best strategy for detoxing by far and away. Don't eat. Give yourself two days off from food is what I would be doing uh, if I want to detox. Don't put the toxins in, and then the body will eliminate the toxins that are there. I have a problem with detox formulas, and, and I've said this before. I'll just say it again. Um, detox formulas are mostly herbs. And they put stuff in your body that your body has to that has to clear out. Herbs are processed like toxins. There's no herbs. Er herbs are plants, and plants have things in them that the body has to eliminate as toxins. And so you're trying to detox. You're putting toxins in the body. Uh, you know they're not like drug toxins, of course, but they're still toxins that the body has to process. So fasting to me is the best way to uh, to do a detox diet. That's. My humble opinion. Thank you for your call, Dorian. And thank you for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Don't forget to check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all, all our truth skin health products. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.